Hello everyone, Dr Polaris here, and welcome to my section of the 2021 Paleontological Rewind. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Edge for inviting me to this project, as well as congratulate the other creators who contributed to the Rewind this year. As for my video, I'll be covering a selection of the paleontological discoveries made during the first half of August, with past eons taking care of the second half. I have highlighted six important papers to discuss that will be covered in a chronological order of publication, so without further ado, let's get started. The first paper I'd like to highlight was that published by Arthur Broom et al. on the 5th of August and describes a new genus of Unenlagene dromaeosaur from Brazil. Named Ipupiara, which means the one that lives in the water in the Tupi language, the remains of this animal were uncovered from the Maastrichtian-aged Bauru group of the Paranya Basin. The remains of this genus were actually first discovered many decades ago, in a period between 1940 and 1960, and consisted of a fragmentary right maxilla and dentary. These were initially described as belonging to an indeterminate vertebrate, and were found in association with a fish jaw. This holotype was stored in the National Museum of Brazil, and would not be discussed again for another 80 years. A paper describing this material was scheduled for publication in 2018, with the fossils being photographed in readiness for further analysis. However, a fire tragically tore through the museum on the 2nd of September that same year, destroying the holotype along with innumerable other specimens. This caused a significant delay for the paleontologists involved, with their paper only being released earlier this year. Based on the photographs taken of the specimen, Ipupiara was assigned to Unenlegionae, a peculiar lineage of dromaeosaurs that were endemic to the southern continents. In life, this theropod would have measured an estimated 2 to 3 metres long, and probably possessed an elongated narrow snout that was utilised for grabbing small mammals, amphibians, and a variety of river-dwelling fish. In terms of phylogeny, Ipupiara was placed as the sister genus to Ostroraptor, a better known and larger Maastrichtian Unenlagene from Argentina. Next, we'll shift over to an animal that died out far more recently, the famous Stella's sea cow. This gentle giant, the largest Cyrenian to ever live, was native to the seas surrounding the Commander Islands, which lie in the Bering Sea between Russia and Alaska. A massive herbivore that fed solely on kelp, Stella's sea cows belonged to the genus Hydrodomalis gigas, and grew to a maximum length of 9 metres or 30 feet, and weighed in at an impressive 8 to 10 tonnes as adults. This animal was a member of the Cyrenian family Dugongidae, with its only living relative being the much smaller Dugong of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. A gregarious and social species, Stella's sea cows lived in small family groups near to the surface, as their enormous bodies were naturally buoyant and were incapable of sinking. Their skin was thick and darkly coloured, protecting the species from damage caused by sharpened ice and rocks. Unfortunately, these adaptations left the sea cows both vulnerable and desirable to human hunters and whalers. First described in writing in 1741 by German zoologist Georg Steller, the genus was rapidly hunted to extinction for its meat, milk and blubber. On the 8th of August 2021, a paper by Cameron Bullen et al. examined the extinction of this impressive Cyrenian, and suggested how the species helped maintain the health of its kelp forest ecosystems. The authors found that the sea cows contributed to increased nutrient cycling in life, aided in the dispersal of kelp spores through grazing, and contributed to an increased diversity of microalgae in the understory. In addition, excessive hunting of contemporary sea otters may have also led to the extinction of Hydrodomalis, with the absence of otters leaving sea urchins to run riot, destroying sections of kelp forest on which these animals relied. In all, this was an important study of the key role played by marine megafauna in maintaining their ecosystems, as well as the potential negative impacts caused by their extirpation. On the following day, August 9th, a new genus of Australian pterosaur was described in a paper by Timothy Richards, Paul Stumcat and Stephen Salisbury. Since fossils of these flying reptiles are incredibly rare in the land down under, the naming of a new species is a significant event indeed. This animal was named Thapungaka, which means spear mouth in the Aboriginal Wanamara language, the remains of which consisted of a partial lower mandible that was unearthed from Upper Albion Age deposits of the Toolbook Formation, Queensland. 
Dated to approximately 104 to 100 million years ago, Thabungaka represents the largest known Australian pterosaur genus so far described, with an estimated wingspan of up to 7 metres or 23 feet. Phylogenetic analysis has placed this pterosaur as a member of the family Ahangueridae, being in particular a part of the subfamily Tropionathinae. Thapungarka was closely related to two other Australian members of this subfamily, with these being the smaller Ferrodraco and Mithunga. In life, this genus would have been a large piscivore, soaring over open waters and seizing fish with its sharp conical teeth. In other Mesozoic-related news, the 12th of August saw the description of two new sauropod dinosaurs from the Xinjiang region of China, named Silu Titan and Hami Titan respectively. These animals were native to the early Cretaceous Shenjiko formation, dating to approximately 120 million years ago. The former genus, Silu Titan, meaning Silk Road Giant, was described from a holotype specimen consisting of six cervical vertebrae with intact neural spines. A modestly sized sauropod, Silu Titan sinensis measured approximately 9 metres or 30 feet long, and weighed about as much as a modern Asian elephant. The phylogenetic analysis conducted in the paper placed this animal as a member of the Macronarian family Euhelopidae, a group endemic to Eastern Asia. It was found to be the sister genus of the slightly larger Euhelopus, and would have been a high-browsing herbivore in life. The second genus described in the paper was Hamititon shinjangensis, known from seven caudal vertebrae from the lower tail, a non-lithostrian titanosaur that measured approximately 17 metres or 55 feet long and weighing in the region of 35 tonnes. Hamititon was most closely related to genera that are of South American origin, including Kaiju Titan and Noto Colossus. In life, both Silu Titan and Hamititon lived alongside indeterminate theropods, another unnamed sauropod, and the pterosaur Hamiterus. On the 13th of August, a paper by Christoph Hendricks and Philip Bell reanalyzing the preserved skin impressions of the abelisaur Carnotaurus was published online. This famous carnivorous genus from the late Cretaceous of Argentina possesses the most extensive skin impressions of any theropod dinosaur, and the only example of this form of integument known outside Tetanure. The skin is preserved in the shoulder, thoracic, tail and possibly neck regions, and consists of medium to large conical feature scales, surrounded by a network of low and small non-embricting basement scales, separated by narrow interstitial tissue. Contrary to the conclusions reached in older studies, Hendricks and Bell suggest that the larger feature scales were randomly distributed and did not form neat rows as seen in traditional reconstructions of this animal. They also show little difference in morphology along the body, while the basement scales vary greatly in size and shape across different regions of the animal. The authors suggest that this placement aided Carnotaurus individuals in shedding excess heat, with the skin playing a vital role in thermoregulation in the life of this large, active predator. Switching our attention away from non-avian dinosaurs and towards the animals that thrived after the KPG extinction event, we come to a paper describing three new genera of so-called condyloths from the early Paleocene of North America. Condyloths were a wastebasket group of basal ungulates that has historically included a vast array of families that may not have been closely related to each other. One early group of condyloths were the periptychids, a family of generalised herbivorous and omnivorous terrestrial animals that first appeared within hundreds of thousands of years after the end of the Cretaceous, and seemed to have been close relatives of the pantodonts. A new study published in August by Madeleine Atbury et al. named three new periptychid species, all of which were rather large by the standards of early Paleocene mammals. Bayonus honeyi, a cat-sized genus with bulbous molars, was named after the shape-shifting bear man Bayon from The Hobbit, and likely fed mostly on plants, supplemented by insects and possibly carrion. It would not have resembled modern ungulates at all, instead appearing more like a raccoon or civet with five-toed feet, a long heavy tail, and possessing a flexible diet. Two close relatives, Conacodon and Miniconus, dwelt in the same subtropical forested environments of early Paleocene southern Wyoming. These discoveries suggest that we cannot generalise about mammal diversification rates in the aftermath of the KPG extinction event, with certain groups achieving larger sizes rather rapidly, setting the stage for the later evolution of true hoofed mammals. Thanks for watching everyone. Once again I'd like to thank Edge for including me in this Paleo Rewind, 
and remember to stay tuned for the second half of August, which will be covered by past eons. I hope you all had a pleasant holiday season, and I look forward to the discoveries that the new year will surely bring. See you again soon. Cheerio.